I should begin this video clarifying what I mean by a monstrous race. You should think of humanoid species found in fantasy, sci-fi and many more settings. Those that are more, for lack of a better word, animalistic than human. See an elf, dwarf, Klingon and this incredibly unique and original species would not qualify as they differ only minor features. The races I wish to discuss are more akin to lizardmen, gnolls, werewolves even, but as I go through my points you'll get a better picture. When it comes to world building, there are an incredible number of factors and details one needs to take into account. Regardless of whether it is a single person creating this setting or an entire group, there are a lot of things we are ignorant of, or copy without even thinking about it. All art is derivative, the fantasy genre especially. This is not a bad thing, of course, it's part of the reason I like it so much. However, I feel like the basis of the race's V-trade is itself flawed, and we should stop and take a thorough look at what it is we aim to implement in the first place. What I'll do here is list a few of these flaws, things that would make for races far more interesting than funny-looking humans. Things that would make them grounded rather than far-fetched creatures that would never truly exist. I did compile some, but this is most definitely not an exhaustive list. If you think of any more, please let me know. It would not only help me, but potentially anyone else looking for inspiration. Also, returning viewers might notice that I've renamed this series for a second time. I wasn't really content with previous names, as I think they did not efficiently convey what this series is about. I hope this one does a better job. Alright, that was quite a long intro, so here we go. Speech. Humans have kind of a unique facial structure, which is a key reason behind how languages sound. Even the fact that upbringing has such a crucial role in what our accent sounds like, and how well we can adopt the pronunciation of other languages, proves that speech is more than just the capacity to emit sound. Even one's environment throughout life alters it. If I made this video 10-15 years ago, oh boy would it sound different. I would have a terrible accent. Now picture this with a creature that has a wildly different build, say like a Khajiit. In reality, a Middle Eastern accent would not be the only effect that would have. It is guaranteed that the split lips and even their jaw would prompt them to develop language we can only imagine. Add this to the fact that the social life of cats differs from that of primates and would likely evolve in a unique way. Establishing such a monstrous creature doesn't seem so easy now. It is not all doom and gloom though, it is likely that in some form cat people and humans could learn and to an extent speak each other's language, however it would sound weird and uncanny for both parties. Just think of this archaic meme. We can more or less associate some sounds with letters of a human alphabet, but it doesn't sound right. It would surely be a bit less ridiculous if there is actual intent behind these words, but it wouldn't only be a charming accent. Ah, snitch, eh? Can't have you running to any guards now, can I? Now, when it comes to birds, things work out significantly better. I know, we are awesome. Numerous bird species are a master of imitating sounds. I'm sure you're all aware of it. While this would not mean their language would be similar to humans, Quite the contrary, it would likely be completely unspeakable by mammalian lips. The bird people themselves would likely have no trouble mastering, say, English. However, this would be exactly as weird as when parrots speak. They would not really say the words, but rather imitate their sound. We should not be different functionally, but it would be difficult to mistake it with a human's voice. To support this idea, I just have to mention Alex. He was a grey parrot who was the subject of an experiment by Irene Pepperberg. The goal of this study was to see how intelligent birds are and whether parrots can be taught to speak and answer questions. He did learn. According to Irene, he was on the level of about a 5 year old human. Unfortunately, he died prematurely. His last words were, you'll be good, I love you, see you tomorrow, which was the thing he said every time the scientist left the lab where he was kept and it's, it's so heartbreaking, let's just change the subject. So all this actually gives a free pass for non-avian races as well. You can always just say they imitate sounds well. It would likely have to be the case with reptilian species or arthropods, as I do not see them being capable of producing humanoid sounds very well on their own. All in all, it is something to think about. 
giving them a weird or monstrous voice and letting them speak fluent English with a British accent is not something any world builder with a modicum of respect for their art should do. It always bugs me to hell when a dragon does that. What a shit movie that was. Anyway, there are other points I'd like to make. Tails and posture. I'm not a fan of random as tails. Humans do not have any for a reason. They do not need it. And having it would be both a detriment to some of their activities and a drain on precious resources. The early ancestors who still had them had a disadvantage, as they disappeared over the course of evolution. Therefore, tails need to have a purpose. There are some easy choices like climbing or swimming, but remember, humans could use them for those purposes too, but they don't. They don't because it is not crucial in their lifestyle. Better tree climbing and swimming are not essential for human existence and tails would be of far less use than what they are worth. Hence, if you wish to make a race with a tail that uses it for such activities, have those activities be part of everyday life. Arboreal lodgings, living mostly underwater, aspects like these are sufficient backgrounds for a tail, but there are at least three more. If you would like to keep your monstrous or just tailed humanoid in a city-based society, you could have your cake and eat it too with a bit of legwork developing their society. In nature, tails are often crucial in communication. Say the species you wish to establish uses their appendage to confer body language, something seeped deep in that traditional way of speaking, a body part without which one would face immense difficulty in navigating social life. This would mean that even if evolution would attempt to weed tails out, societal developments would keep that from happening. While I do think at one point or another there would be a language revolution, as using sounds only is infinitely simpler, tails would stay for countless generations even after that. Also, if tails have appeal, both sexual and prestige-wise, that could have the same result. People with long or bushy or particularly spiky tails would be more attractive in the eyes of others, therefore having a higher chance of successfully siring children than those with ugly or even missing ones. One could also argue they are used for balancing, however that would require more changes. You see, humans can balance fine with nothing coming out of their ass. For a species to require tails for similar purposes, it has to have a stature similar to that of a raptor for example. Hunched forward, designed for speed. While you could play around with it a bit, just do not have something like this, as that would be imbalanced more than anything. For a good example, I'd say Warhammer Lizardman. While likely unintentional, that is a good design. If you are considering having tails for defensive purposes only, I'd advise against it. Once a species is walking upright with hands to spare, there's not much point in having them. What would you rather use, a pointy stick with which you can step anywhere, or an innate weapon you can only use by turning your back towards the enemy? You need a very specific design for a tail weapon to be viable, which includes no hands. I'd like to clarify though that I'm not talking about things like stingers. Arthropods are another matter entirely, and they need a dedicated video. In short, as of right now, I do not see anything wrong with a stinger, if the design of the body allows it. For my closing point, I'd also like to bring up something I've already touched on in this video, and most of the videos on my channel. Evolution. Now, if you are designing a world that has been created by gods or precursors or whatever, this has little bearing on you. I'd advise against it, and depending on the time that has passed since the dawn of creation would still suggest to include evolution, as it is an integral part of life and procreation, but I digress. I'll likely share my thoughts on this matter somewhere down the line. For now, let's assume that you wish to have evolution in your setting. If you include monstrous races, ones that could not possibly be related to humans or primates, you have to work on how they fit exactly into the natural history of the planet. Now, I do not mean you have to have variants of your species, races in the same genus or family even. As you can see, humans made sure to drive the point home that it is a possibility that the species in question is the only one to make it. However, there have to be signs of predecessors and animals that diverged long before, only resembling the people in question. I'm not talking about fossils. Not necessarily at least, as that is an interesting thought as well. Although, I'd rather focus on living examples. Let's take gnaws for example. Many would say that they are descendants of hyenas which would be a huge flaw. Early hyenas? Perhaps. 
ones which split into species that later developed into the animals in question, and others that evolved to walk on two legs eventually. To have a sentient, intelligent tool using race, you need hands, or something very similar. Hyenas are not likely to ever develop those due to their lifestyle. Now, if there was a group of animals similar in appearance to Hyenidae, but decided to adopt an arboreal habitat, climbing a lot, hunting among the leaves, they would likely resemble something more primate-like. If you have as much as a single such creature, that adds a whole lot to the setting, giving its natural history depth. It is not necessary, of course, one could say the ancestors are already extinct, but it should still be acknowledged. Having a race just spring into existence with no fanfare rings hollow to me. Of course, this does imply that species based on animals that can already climb means there are fewer steps necessary, and that birds would need a lot more work. Having separate sets of limbs to operate objects and stand on is something of a prerequisite, I'd say. Do not get me started on humanoids with both arms and wings, though. That would fall under the category of six-limbed vertebrates, which is a beast of its own. I'll have to do a video on that too, won't I? Man, this single topic gave me a lot to do in the future. These were the points I could think of. Things like losing most of one's body hair are not a necessity, I think. It is possible for most of the more developed animals to achieve sentience, I'd say. Sponges and jellyfish couldn't, but not many people wish to make those a thing. Oh. Well, it is likely more complex than a simple manoeuvre. Anyway, what you should take away from this, or any other video I make in this series, is never to mindlessly copy something. Always analyze it, as it is likely going to have flows the initial creators did not know of. Many aspects like fantasy races are iterated without a second thought, going through countless minor transformations, receiving different cultures, color schemes or history, but there is seldom any real consideration behind their biological aspects, which is a shame. I hope I can make a change, not only through a work of my own, but influencing others to use their head more than those that came before. That's it for the video though, hope you enjoyed this fun. I really don't feel like doing the box standard YouTube outro anymore, so this will have to do. I kinda feel embarrassed for doing it in the past, like I gave away part of my integrity, my soul. Regardless, hope to see you in the future, bye!